this video is titled exponential models and sometimes we like to use exponential equations or exponential graphs to model real life problems when we do this we can sometimes use this information to solve these real life problems so we'll get into example one it says on march 12 2020 Australia recorded 28 new cases of COVID-19. This was also the day that Australia started to go into lockdown. The number of COVID-19 cases double almost every four days when countries don't take any action to slow the spread of the virus. Now what I did is I went and looked at some of the statistics and I attempted to model the COVID-19 growth using this formula here. Now C represents the predicted number of COVID-19 cases for a day. And N represents the number of days since March 12th. So if we look at question A, it says how many COVID-19 cases would we predict Australia to have on March 22nd? This is 10 days after March 12th if we hadn't gone into lockdown. So this formula is based on us not going into lockdown. It's to predict what would have happened. Okay, so for question A, we'll start by copying the formula down. C equals 28 times 1.2 to the power of N. And 10 days later means that N is going to be 10. Bringing up our calculator, 28 times 1.2 to the power of 10 comes out to about 173. So we would have had 173 cases on March 22nd had we not gone into lockdown. Let's make this a bit more interesting. Question B is asking the same thing, except we want to see what would have happened on May 11th. 60 days after March 12th. Had we not gone into lockdown, how many cases do we predict we would have had? Well, starting of course by copying the formula down, C equals 28 times 1.2 to the power of N. 60 days later means times 1.2 to the power of 60. Let's see how many cases we get in this situation. 28 times 1.2 to the power of 60 equals, and we get 1,577,730 cases. So we can see by using this formula how dangerous it becomes when we don't go into lockdown. All right, we've got question C and D to go. Question C says complete the table of values below then draw the graph for C equals 28 times 1.2 to the power of N. All right, so if we start in the first row where N is zero and bring up our calculator, we're going 28 times 1.2 to the power of N. So N in this case is zero and we get 28. So write 28 here. We've already figured out what we get when n is 10. We did that in question A. When n was 10, we got 173 cases. So we'll write that down. We'll go to the third row now and see what happens when n equals 20. So this time it's 28 times 1.2 to the power of 20. And we get about 1,073 cases this time. 1,073. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause and finish this off. I want you to do this along with me. So you can see that the numbers get really big as n progresses to bigger numbers. So if we're going to graph this, it's going to be quite easy to pick values for n. We'll start there. That's our horizontal axis, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. 
So this is our n axis here. Now looking at our vertical axis, it needs to get as high as almost 250,000. So in order to reach this massive number, I'm going to need to go up pretty much by 25,000 each time. So I'm going to skip a square at first. I'll go up to the second line here and I'll say 50,000 and I'll just go up by two squares each time. 100,000, 150k, 200k and 250,000. So this is going to be my C axis. Now I need to label these one, two, three, four, five, six points on my Cartesian plane. And I'm going to suggest starting with the points with bigger numbers first. So when n is 50, c is 254,812. Now if I was to mark that, it would go maybe just above the 250,000 mark when n is 50. For the next one, when n is 40, c is 41,154. That would go about there. Next, when n is 30, c is 6,647. Now, we need to remember that we're going up by 25,000 each time. So 6,647 is about quarter of 25,000. So it's about quarter of one square. Go about there. The other three are very small when you're talking about gaps of 25,000. These three here are going to be practically on the line. Especially the 28 and the 173 basically will be touching the line and the 1073 would be so slightly above that line. Now you can see when we connect these dots it should be in the shape of an exponential growth curve. We're now moving on to question D which says why does the exponential growth of COVID-19 provide such a strong concern for countries around the world? We'll just say that exponential growth is so rapid that COVID-19 can get out of control very quickly. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.